The World Health Organization has called on China to share accurate data on coronavirus infections and deaths. It follows a sharp rise in cases after Beijing abandoned its zero COVID policy. On Friday, the British government announced that all passengers traveling to England from mainland China will be required to produce a negative COVID test before boarding their flight. A number of other countries, including the United States, India, France, Spain and Italy, have already announced similar measures. Our political correspondent Helen Catt reports. A flight touching down this evening at Heathrow from Qingdao. From Thursday, anyone travelling to England from mainland China will have to show a negative COVID test to fly. From a week on Sunday, a sample of passengers at Heathrow will also be tested on arrival. The government says it's a precaution due to a lack of comprehensive information from the Chinese government. The country has seen a surge of coronavirus, which analysts claim is being underreported. The reason there are millions of cases of coronavirus infection happening is because the population there are either unvaccinated or undervaccinated using Chinese vaccines that don't work as well as the mRNA vaccines that we've been using in Western countries. And the consequence is that there's a really big surge in infections and what people are concerned about is that among those new infections there may be new variants of the virus. It's not thought that any new variants of coronavirus are circulating in China. Yesterday, ministers here had said that meant they had no plans to introduce testing. Some had urged the government to consider it and are pleased at the change of heart. The approach we've taken on board uh, does make it clear to the Chinese authorities that given their lack of um, uh, transparency on their data, we will have to put in measures. And it does do uh, uh, some... Um, improvement on protecting the NHS. So it is not the full measure, but I think it's pragmatic uh, and a sensible first step. The changes will bring England in line with the United States. France has tonight too said it will bring in mandatory testing. Italy, India and Japan are among other countries which have already done so. The UK government says it will review the temporary measures if China improves on its transparency and information sharing. Well, Dr. Jeannie Marazzo is the Director of Infectious Diseases at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I asked her if the new measures were justified. It's a great question, and part of the reason to ask that is the different approaches, right, that are emerging right now. The European CDC is very much not in favor of these sanctions, and yet you just mentioned several countries that are getting on board. I think a lot of the rationale has to do with the fact that we really don't know what's going on in China. There have been anecdotal reports of extreme ICU or intensive care unit loads, as well as use of emergency departments for what we think is a really serious upswing in infections. But in the absence of very good reporting and transparency, we just don't know. Also, China has not really been submitting very many of its viruses for the genomic sequences that helps us define variants. So while we say we don't think new variants are emerging from China, we really can't say that with great confidence. So the two reasons to do this are to keep disease out and not import it. That's irrelevant. We all have COVID in all of these countries right now. And the other reason is to avoid importation of a new concerning variant. And we really don't know if that is a risk, given the lack of data. Yes, and, and it's interesting because you sort of mentioned there about sort of the lack of transparency. Um, for lots of people, lots of countries and authorities, the end of this policy of zero COVID in China sort of caught them by surprise. I mean, was there perhaps a better way of handling that? Lots of experts have pointed to that. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great question. Uh, I think that if you look at what has worked in other countries, sometimes by default and not even with great strategic implementation, i.e. in the United States, what seems to have mitigated the ongoing devastation of what could be seen with this virus has been a step up in effective vaccination. And I'll come back to that because China has a real problem with that for two big reasons. Sinovac, which is their vaccine, is really not as effective as the mRNA vaccines, especially in the elderly. So you've got a very big, vulnerable population to this new wave of infections. And people are very nervous that when you have this 
this immunologically naive population, particularly older people who are more likely to get infected and get severe consequences, that you are going to see a severe impact. 